Okay guys, we're going underneath the house. When you install a septic system, you've got to have a vent. Um, we've got a vent coming off of our toilet. We have the toilet pipe sticking down. This is going to be running to a two inch pipe. Uh, the vent off of the toilet goes all the way through the walls and comes up out at the top of the roof up yonder to vent the septic system and to give an airflow into the system so that when you flush the toilet, it uh, allows air to come in as, as the water goes down through the pipe. So next thing we're gonna do is install this underneath the house. We're gonna get on there and glue it and then we're gonna measure down and try to get the measurement for our pipe coming into the septic tank. Okay guys, when you get these, make sure you get a DWV, it's a drain with a vent pipe, and always make sure that your angle is pointing down into the system, so that if water ever gets into it, it will go down into the system, rather than if you turn it up like this, and you flush your toilet, it would go over into this, and it would stop up your system, so you want to make sure it's always turned in the right direction. And yes guys, I know y'all are going to say this is not the code because I'm not using a cleaner, but, uh, and code does say you have to use a cleaner, but this is not under pressure, so I'm not really worrying about it. Now comes the part I want to talk about for just a moment. The inlet side of a septic tank from the house going to the tank requires a one quarter of an inch per foot of run of pipe drop. So every four foot of a pipe, your pipe will drop one inch. So we're going to make sure that we have that drop up here and then we're going to get our measurement uh, yonder so we can go ahead and cut that piece of pipe and we're kind of dry fitting it now to make sure we get everything to the exact length there's a lot of ways to achieve the one inch in four foot uh, you can take a level like this and you can put a one inch block uh, you can tape it to the end of it so that when you set it on here and your level is sitting perfectly level you know you have a one inch drop uh, a lot of people will put the bubble at a certain place they'll measure and see where the bubble is in here and they'll just keep the bubble is how they'll do it so uh, we'll probably just do the bubble method I'm not going to tape a piece of wood or something onto the end of my level here um, the first thing we're going to do is see where our pipe's sitting at okay our pipe is running uphill just a little bit so we're okay with that, but we're going to make sure that we get our quarter inch. Uh, I'm going to look and see where one inch is. There we go. As a matter of fact, it is on my particular level. It is half a bubble. Half a bubble in my level gives me a one inch drop. So we're perfectly fine with that. I'll just use the half a bubble method. As a matter of fact, it is sitting at a half a bubble right now. Yes. So evidently, I have the right drop as already. The so next thing to do is to get underneath there and measure my one little piece of pipe right yonder. And we'll. Um, dry fit that and I'll get my measurement right here because we got to put a septic T in here. Uh, it'll be a homemade one because the tank did not come with one and we'll explain that when we get to the T. Okay guys this is the rubber grommet we just slipped it on the pipe here. Uh, they fit real tight around it. This is what's going to go through the hole in the tank and seal it off so that um, we don't have any water to get into it.
septic tanks have to have T's in them. Um, you have an inlet T and you have an outlet T. Now this isn't going to be the, this is going to be the inlet T, and just like any drain uh, DWV, it goes down this way so that your solids come. They automatically turn down. You don't want to turn it up like this because then it it wouldn't work right. You want it to go like this so everything flows downward. Now this one from the bottom of right here to right here is 14 inches. What we want to do on the inlet side is we want to stay about one third the distance to the bottom of the tank on the inlet side. We want the uh, the sludge and all that stuff is going to flow right up in this area, right up in here on it. Then you'll have clear water down beyond it here and then you'll have your uh, settlement at the bottom which is your paper and your poop and stuff like that, your solids all at the bottom. And that's why we want the inlet side to be a little bit higher so that when it comes down into here it falls down to the bottom. Now in a minute we're going to put the outlet side, there'll be an outlet T just like an inlet T and re it requires, we put a four inch piece on the top of this, uh, the requirement is that you be at least two inches from the top of your cap of your tank as a minimum for the escape of gases and stuff up out of this. So we left ours a little bit more than two inches because it, it doesn't matter here really as long as you're two inches or more. So now we're going to glue this on to here and we're going to start on the outlet side. Okay guys, one of the things I'm going to do is we got just enough dirt in this hole to cover up to the top of the pipe. I'm going to put a little water around it because I want to make sure the dirt goes under the pipe so that we don't have a sag in the pipe or something in the future. ground is still so hard from the drought even though we got three and a half inches of rain like I explained earlier it's still like concrete so I'm using an unconventional method I'm taking a post hole auger on the back of my tractor and I'm drilling this hole out down through here and just going back scooping the loose dirt out of it because if it wasn't for that I wouldn't be digging this I'd be sitting here picking with a pick and I'm too old for that so we're going to use equipment to do whatever we got to do with Okay guys, we're going, like we mentioned before, we're going to put the tank probably a third of the way full of water, maybe even half. We just keep bringing five gallon bucket fulls of water over here, pouring it in it, so that we've got enough weight in the tank in the event that it rains, it doesn't float up out of the ground. And plus it helps to settle it when it rains. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with these plastic tanks. They will float like a cork in the water. Okay guys, this is the outlet T. Now the outlet T has to go like two-thirds the distance down in the tank. Um, and 
you have to realize now this the outlet side is three inches lower than the inlet side is so you have to take that into compensation we put a four inch top on this one over here to keep it five inches from the top of the lid on this one I put a seven inch piece because we dropped three inches on this side to keep them both the same distance from the top of the lids here and this piece here I ended up cutting it uh, I cut it 14 inches long which makes it 16 from here down and we've already dropped three inches on the outlet side so that makes us 19 inches deep down in the tank which is plenty for what we need here so we've got the tea the outlet tea is made now so what we're going to do now is we've got to try we're going to put this pipe in this is our outlet pipe now the outlet pipe has to drop a minimum of one eighth of an inch it can drop more but it has to be at least an eighth of an inch so we're going to go more than an eighth of an inch I'm going to drop mine down pretty quick because I'm going kind of downhill here a little bit and it's, it, this is the outlet side so it doesn't matter until you get to the leach field once you get to the leach field then it has to be level so from the tank to the leach field it can drop whatever you want as long as it's an eighth of an inch or more so we're going to try to get this in get this drain tee on here and we're going to put the top on this thing guys we're ready to cover this baby up okay guys I'm going to go ahead and glue my fitting on this end before I put it in the ground because we have a road right here and I got to make a bend so we're going to put a uh, 22 and a half degree uh, elbow on here so that um, we can angle it over this way and then we'll put another 22 and a half back in the opposite direction to take it back straight so we can put our leach field out there We've got both our teas in now. Time to put some more water in it. We're going to bring it on up with a little bit more water so we know that this thing's got enough weight in it that it doesn't want to come up out of the ground. And then we're going to put our lid on it and we're going to start digging our leach field. guys we've put at least 10 plus five gallon bucket fulls of water in the in it here I feel like that's enough to hold it down we're gonna go ahead and put the lid back on it now and uh, start back filling it with dirt okay guys we got the lid on we're going to start covering it up with dirt now. We get through with that, we're going to start digging the field, uh, the leach field, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. So the leach field will be another video. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. <laughs>